children. Now let us see different genetic diseases, their typical features that can be seen on the x-ray. The important one here we have is the acrodermal dysplasia, cherubism, osteoporosis, imperfecta, osteopetrosis, cleidocranial dysplasia, craniofacial dysplasia that is also called as Cruzen syndrome, or mandibular facial diastosis called as Treacher Collins syndrome, achondroplasia, clefts of the lip and palate, Pierre Robin syndrome, sickle cell anemia, thalassemia, hemifacial hypoplasia and hypertrophy, and Gardner syndrome. Let's see here, first picture is ectodermal dysplasia because you have less teeth here, hypodontia or you can even have anodontia with no teeth at all. You see in the picture that many teeth are missing here, that is hypodontia here. Now cherubism, you can see extensive multilocular radiolucent lesions both in the mandible and maxilla, feature of cherubism when you have bilaterally expanded jaws. Now this is osteonacea imperfecta, changes similar to that of the dentinacea imperfecta, we can see cervical constrictions abnormally at the CJ area and we can see completely calcified pulp chamber and canals and the teeth have opalescent hue. This is osteopetrosis lateral skull radiograph, dense calcifications you can see here both in the skull and the jaw result in loss of bony trabeculae and all the sinuses are obliterated with the bone. This is cleidocranial dysplasia where you can bring the clavicle or the bones together, absence of clavicle, patient can bring the shoulder bones together, underdeveloped maxilla is seen here. So, you have class 3 in cleidocranial dysplasia. This is the PS skull view where you see delayed closure of the sutures and fontanelles are still present here in TM posterior fontanelle. And presence of multiple Wormian bone means they are like floating bones appearance because the sutures are not properly fused. Along with that a very important feature of cleidocranial dysplasia if you see here there are multiple unerupted supernumerary teeth which are seen. Now, the Krausen syndrome is craniofacial diastosis, facial malformation show hypoplasia or a small maxilla with mandibular prognathism that is class 3 again. Eyes exhibit hyperterrorism like widely separated eye, exophthalmos and divergent strabismus. Now, Krusen syndrome, craniofacial diastosis, lateral skull radiograph, you can see early closure of cranial sutures here actually and the prominent digital marking. Feature Collins syndrome, mandibular facial diastosis, characteristic facial appearance, there is a downward sloping of the palpable fissures here, coloboma or the third of the lower eyelid, that means you see fissures there, depressed cheekbones, receding chin and a nose that appears relatively large, Feature Collins syndrome. Again, achondroplasia patient, dwarfism because of the clavicle not fully developed. Now, the achondroplasia, you can see this is the genetic condition of dwarfism where the cartilage is not properly developed. So, these people are short in comparison, their extremities are short in comparison with their torso. Achondroplastic dwarfism should not be confused with pituitary dwarfism because in pituitary dwarfism, the size of the limb is proportional to the size of torso. That is how you differentiate with pituitary dwarfism. Cleft of the maxilla situated in between the maxillateral and the canine, you can see here clefting. Pere Robin syndrome infant exhibits severe micrognathia of the mandible. Here you have like what is called as a bird like face, very small mandible. Sickle cell anemia lateral cell radiograph show thicker than normal cranial vault and linear marking of hair on end appearance. If you look at the picture here, these are enlarged bony trabeculae that is giving the appearance of hair on end appearance. Both in sickle cell anemia and thalassemia, you can see this. Enlarged marrow spaces which also give a step ladder like appearance, you can see here, it's like a step ladder like appearance with the enlarged marrow spaces with the trabeculae that is also seen in the sickle cell anemia. Thalassemia, PS skull view, same thing, you will see here on under appearance as I told you, these are all enlarged bony trabeculae. Generalized rear fraction, thalassemia, panoramic radiograph, thinning of cortical bone, enlarged marrow spaces with thin trabeculation. Overall, you will see the bone density is very reduced here. This is hemifacial hypoplasia, affected side of the face is smaller than the normal side here. Crumpled and distorted pinna of the external ear on the involved side. So, this size is involved, looks smaller than this side of the face. Pinna is also deformed here. This is hemifacial hypertrophy when one side of the face is enlarged. Progressive growth of the half of the face. Gardner syndrome, PS skull view, multiple osteomas we know are seen in Gardner syndrome along with the multiple polyps in the colon. Part. Most of the patients develop into colon cancer here. So this is called as a cotton wool appearance. Same that you see in Peges disease. Metabolic diseases we have students. Peges disease, hyper hyperpathism, hyper hypopituitarism, hyper 
hypothyroidism, diabetes mellitus, Cushing, rickets and osteomalacia, hypophosphatasia, osteoporosis, scleroderma, edges disease, lateral skull radiograph, cotton wool appearance that is like circumscribed radio opacity that you see on the lateral skull radiograph and the edges disease showing a cotton wool appearance also on the PS skull view you can see these circumscribed radio opacities that is the cotton wool appearance multiple radio opaque mass on the panoramic radiograph also there these are multiple periapical radiographs that you can see of the edges disease patchy radio opacities in the jaws spacing of the teeth loss of lamina dura and hypercementosis that can also be seen in the edges disease in hyperparathyroidism, you see generalized disappearance of lamina dura. There is loss of lamina dura seen in hyperparathyroidism. And reduction radiographic bone density here. Hyperparathyroidism showing osteoporosis of the bone. Also having a ground glass appearance with loss of trabecular pattern. Loss of lamina dura that is seen in hyperparathyroidism. In hyperparathyroidism, you also see central giant cell lesion that give it a brown tumor appearance. Ill-defined radiolucency and disappearance or loss of lamina dura. Now, hyperpituitism means you have increased growth hormone in adults that will lead to acromegaly. Main thing is enlargement of mandible here. You can see class 3 skeletal malocclusion in acromegaly. This is dwarfism from pituitary. Small stretcher. This is hypothyroidism we know. Enlargement of the thyroid gland. Cretinism. Decrease thyroxine hormone. Short, fat, puffy features in hypothyroidism or cretinism in children, large tongue which can cause separation of the teeth, uncontrolled diabetes mellitus definitely can lead to loss of the alveolar bone, rickets due to deficiency of vitamin D here, you will see rare fraction of the bone and also lamina dura is lost here in the rickets, osteomalacia is vitamin D deficiency in the adults where you see again osteoporosis of the bone and disappearance of lamina dura. Hypophosphatasia, deficiency of alkaline phosphatase enzyme that is important for calcification. So, if it is reduced, you will see thin enamel, thin root, thin dentine, thin cementum and large pulp chambers. You can see the picture. The calcification looks completely affected. Osteoporosis of an elderly female like a postmenopausal female. Reduction overall quality and quantity of tuberculae in the cancellous bone. The bone looks very thin, very less dense. Scleroderma where do you have widening of the PDL. Generalized abnormal width of the pedial space. All over you can see pedial spaces widened here. Now we can see 